Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. I've got a Nikon lens review today, the 14 to 24 Nikkor f2.8, and I'm excited to play with it because the 7200 2.8 was fantastic. The 24 to 72.8 also excellent. So I'm hoping this lens will keep up that tradition of fantastic optical quality. We're gonna find out today. I think it's fair to say that before this lens arrived on the market, if you wanted a fast wide angle zoom, you're basically looking at the 14 to 24 2.8 for their SLR lineup. A great lens, a classic lens, but of course, bulkier design, larger. You have to use it with an FTZ adapter, which also adds a bit of length and weight to the whole package. So this is really nice because not only is it now replacing that, but it's also very compact. No need for an adapter. It's quite a bit shorter on the body. And weight wise, the old SLR lens was a thousand grams half a knot. This is only 650 grams. That's a third of a knot. So quite a significant savings in both bulk and weight. Now, just like the other professional zooms in the Nikkor Z mount lineup, this is very well built. It feels solid, weather sealed, of course. We love having the digital display. I mean, this is great to just give you a digital reminder of your focal length, or you can see where you are focused at distance, even with hyperfocal marks for the aperture, or you can use it as an aperture display using the control ring that's on this lens. You also have a customizable button here, no image stabilization, but that's par for the course with ultra wide lenses. Of course, we have it here in the body, autofocus, manual focus select, switch and then when we get to the front of the lens well we've got a couple hoods we're going to talk about that next now naturally ultra wide lenses are going to get used for a lot of landscape photography and then naturally you want to have some sort of filter support which is why earlier i mentioned hoods plural because nikon actually give you this second hood now granted it is quite large and bulky especially the lens cap but this does provide 112 millimeter filter thread in size. And granted, those filters are very hard to find. They're very expensive, but it's nice to have that option if you're really into landscape photography. And you can put a polarizer or an ND in there, for example, without cutting off your corners. Now, if you like to go another route and put gel filters in the back, you also have that allotment there at the back of the lens mount. So overall, very versatile choice if you wanna do filter work. So the weather's turned around a little bit for us. We don't have any of that smoke that we've been dealing with over the last few weeks, but nice, bright, sunny day, hot, hot day, but a good opportunity to test flare and sun stars. Now, when it comes to flare, the 1424 is very well controlled. You can see here, really not getting a lot of loss of contrast, no ghosting or weird reflections really. So this lens handles bright light sources coming into the lens very well. Now, the other thing I want to test for is sun stars because landscape photographers love doing these kind of things, night photography, cityscapes. Here it handles these also quite well, but the sun stars aren't as pretty as you might see from the competition. You can see some examples here. They start to blur out a little bit, spread out a little bit. Now, as far as lateral chromatic aberrations go, just fringing around contrasted areas, nothing to worry about. Anything you do see will be easy to fix in post. It's the loca that we worry about, the longitudinal chromatic aberration. You get those color shifts in the foreground, background, out of focus areas, but this lens handled it beautifully. Nothing to worry about, nothing to really have to clean up in post. Very impressive results. Hey, let's do a walk and talk, Chris. It's too hot, I don't want to. So Nikon has chosen to go with a stepping motor on the 14 to 24, which promises smooth autofocus, but usually not fast autofocus. So we did a test here. Surprised to say, actually, the autofocusing is very quick. You can see here snapping from foreground to background, very smooth and very fast and completely silent. So an impressive autofocusing motor on this lens. All right, it's time for the video talk. Jordan doesn't really feel like being on camera, so I'm gonna do it, but he wants to tell me, he's telling me, oh, he's, Oh, he's making blowing. Okay, so the breathing on the 14 to 24, excellent at both 14 and 24 millimeters. And then he's doing one, two, three. Oh, the trio. Okay, so Jordan's also very impressed that Nikon's delivered excellent trio of high end 2.8 primes, which turned out to be fantastic for video work. And he also wants to say one more thing. Oh, yeah, that I'm the greatest host he's ever worked with, and he's just nope, so that's, happy. That's not it. Yeah, and he treasures every day that he gets to work with you. Don't come. Welcome back. We've had a chance to look at our files, take some more samples. Let's talk about bokeh first on the 14 to 24. 
So if I had to pick a downside on this lens's characteristics, I think it would be bokeh. So let me explain. So first off, let's take a look at specular highlights. You can see here shooting wide open at 2.8, actually very clean bokeh, no onion rings, minimal cat's eye in the corner. When you stop down, things still say nice and round, but you're probably noticing that the bokeh has quite a bright outline, that soap bubble effect. And sometimes what that can do in the background is give you a very busy looking bokeh. And you can see a good example of it here. It certainly doesn't really give you that nice smooth appearance when there's specular highlights in the background. But another issue we have here is just areas that are slightly out of focus. So if you look at this sample here at the bottom right of this spider web, you can see that where areas of transition just go out of the plane of focus, they actually have like a double image, kind of looks like motion blur, but again, regardless, it's distracting. Now, once you get past just out of focus areas, then the bokeh actually looks nice and smooth, and you can see it transitions very nicely into a soft out of focus background. So all in all, you just gotta watch those areas where you might be slightly out of focus when you're shooting wide open. When you close down the aperture a bit, this does largely go away. Now, when it comes to sharpness on this lens, well, you really can't find many complaints at all. I mean, it's incredibly good all throughout its range. So this will be a nice and simple explanation. In this center, actually 2.8 and 5.6 side by side, because stopping down, the sharpness is already excellent. You don't notice much improvement. Now at 2.8, focused in the corners, you can see here it gets a little bit soft in the extreme corner, but stopping down totally corrects that. Now let's take a look at 24 millimeters. Same thing, center focus, both 2.8 and 5.6 side by side. Side. basically no real improvement that you're going to notice. We're already getting excellent sharpness for the 45 megapixel sensor that we were using. And in the corners wide open, you do see the corners again, extreme corners, a little bit of softness when you stop down, that goes away. So I'd happily shoot this lens wide open at 2.8 in a lot of situations, but uh, if you stop it down even a little bit, it's basically excellent no matter where you focus. So as you mentioned earlier in the video, we have shot the 1424 SLR lens quite a bit. And I think it's wonderful now that we have this lens because, you know, the SLR 1424, it was a good lens. This is definitely sharper though, I'm gonna say that. And also way lighter, way more functional with the LCD display. I like the way that it handles. Overall, this is definitely the ultra wide to get if you're looking for one of those lenses for Nikon Z mount. But I think what's really a great achievement here is just that Nikon with the addition of this lens now have a really fantastic trio of 2.8 professional zooms for professionals and enthusiasts alike. And we do love Canon's lineup, but I do feel that now with this lens, the 24 to 70 and the 7200 from Nikon, that lineup just tends to be just a little bit more consistent, just a little bit more, mm, you know? Mm. Either way, if you're a Nikon Z mount user, you now have a fantastic trio of lenses to look at. Now there's lots more information out there. Go to dpreview.com, check out the sample gallery that we have for this lens that we just shot. As well, check out the other two videos. We did the 24 to 70 Nikkor review, love that lens. And the 7200 did very well in our 70 to 200 mirrorless shootout. All those links in the description below, that'll give you even more information to make your decisions. Otherwise, as always, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you soon.